We continue with our study of the Minchas HaOmer, the Karban Minchas HaOmer on the 16th of Nisan. And we said that the Hakrav of the Omer is by day, the 16th by day, Mimochas HaShavos. And what happens at night? Sluchei Bezdi. First, we have to send out the Sluchei Bezdin to designate that Siora for the Karben Minchas HaOmer. As we discussed yesterday, the Torah calls it Gerish Carmel. And Carmel, we said, there's no treatment for Rach Mal. So we're talking about Tvua that's soft and not... Uh, what we it's raka rach mal so so much so that you can in a sense you can squeeze it with your fingers and we don't want to get dry co so we want the shliach besin to find and also it has to be located in close proximity to your chalayim so now we send out the shluchim right before Pesach, Erev Yontif, and Karchin is a Omer Likrichos, he should already, the Shliach Bezin should already bind that designated Siora with Krichos. Krichos means binding it together to designate it while it's still growing in the Karka. And as a result, he number one could identify those CRM that fit the bill. And number two, it makes it easier for him to harvest that Omer, to cut it down. And now it becomes a public event. We think more in terms of Chagashmuos and the bringing of Bikurim, the Mishnah in Bikurim describes all the pageantry and all the public beauty and nature of bringing the Bikurim to Beis HaVigosh, but what about on Pesach itself? Here, we're going to have the Bnei Ayoros HaSmuchos, all of them gather L'Mokam HaKtzira, Miskansim L'Shom, and we make it into a whole Asak, a public spectacle. Now, how much of a volume of siorin should they cut down? It's going to be sa'a, 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 three, sa'in by three different people. So that's why the shluchim bezdin in plural means a minimum of three shluchim who represent bezdin. Each one is going to cut down a sa'a. And they have three different receptacles, Ruvain, Shimon, and Levi are each holding on to a kupa, and each one is going to place the sa'ora that he cuts into his kupa, and Bishosh Magol. So Magol is a sickle. We'll have three sickles. Each one, Ruvain, Shimon, and Levi is going to cut down one sa'ora. Now, what we're going to anticipate here is the possibility that one or even two of these siorin might not qualify. So we always have a backup. Now we have the shita of Rabbi Yishmael. Rabbi Yishmael holds that it really depends upon when the ktsira is taking place. In other words, if the 16th of Nisan coincides with Shabbos. That means on Friday night of the 16th, we're going to cut the Sa'orim for Ktsira Sa'om. And since it's Shabbos, although we said that the Omer overrides the Shabbos like any carbon seed, but nevertheless, we want to li- minimize it. So we're going to have one sa'ar that's going to be cut down, a second and a third. If, on the other hand, Tetzayin Benisa, the 16th of Nisan, 
is on any other day of the week other than Shabbos, we can be much more liberal and allow for five sa'at sa'in to be cut down. The chol, if the tzira took place on a weekday, is koyukotrim chamesh sa'in. The Shabbos, if the 16th of Nisan was on a Shabbos, is shalosh sa'in. So that Rabbi Yishmael is trying to organize, orchestrate the Ketzira on a Shabbos that would minimize the Ketzira. Now there's another approach, a different philosophy, so to speak, as to how you can minimize the violation of Shabbos. Not in terms of volume, how many sa'in you're going to cut down, but in terms of people, how many shluchim are going to be involved in the process of ktsira? And that second approach is none other than Rav Nina Skana Kohen. We don't mind if we send out Ruvain and Shimon and Levi, each one is going to do his ktsira of his son. Why? Because it's a weekday. But if it's Shabbos, if the 16th of Nisan coincides with Shabbos, then Niktar al Yidei Adam Echad. Only one of the three shluchim, or maybe there won't even be another two shluchim, one shliach is going to do all the ktsiros. Now, you and I would have said, what difference does it make if it's one person? doing three ktsiro, so three people doing each one, one ktsiro, one ktsiro. It seems that this halacha of trying to minimize Chil Shabbos is not mi'ikar adin. After all, like any carbon zebra, the minchas ha'omer is docha Shabbos. But for the sake of covered Shabbos, we want to sort of minimize the amount of violating the shop so to speak. again it's not awesome but so what we do is we get one person involved you know as soon as you get another person that's you know shimon is also being machal shop so to speak and levi is also so rabbi hanina van skankar and says no what you know what let's drop shimon and levi out of the picture let rumi do the entire ktsira from beginning to end but that's not all there's something else as well. And what is that? The Magal Echad, he should take one sickle and cut down all three ktsiros, all three sayin. That also is a way of demonstrating that we are diminishing the Chil Shabbos. Because if it's one kli, it's almost as if he's doing one ktsira. Let's not make any mistake about it. He's doing three ktsiras with one sickle. But if he uses only one sickle, it's like all swallowed up in one ktsira. You know, I did it quickly. Next, let's be very tsanua, very hidden and private about the way we store these three sa'in. We'll put them all in one kupa. So you've got one person, one sickle, placing all three sa'in in one kupa. That, according to Rav Hanina, is the way that we sort of, uh, what do we say? We do damage control and, and cut down the public nature and the drama of, you know, the flair of Chil So We don't want flair here. We are allowed to override the Shabbos. Hanida, Rabbi Hanida Skankon doesn't reject the Shita of Rabbi Ishmael about three Shluchei Bezdin, each one holding his own sickle and his own kupa and each one cutting down his own saw. That's true. But that's not the ideal way of doing it. Now, getting back to the idea 
of the public nature of Ktsiras HaOmer. How do we add and expand another dimension? Again, we're talking about Chol, not on Shabbos, of the public, in a sense, participating in this great event, this momentous occasion of Ktsiras HaOmer. HaKotzer, this Shliach Bezid, who's in charge of Ktsira, Shoel es ha'omdim He starts asking the people, Ha'im ba'a shevesh? Did the sun set yet? Meaning, I can only cut the Omer on Tezayin b'nisod at night. So it's now Erev Yontiv. I want to know if the sun set. And it's time for Lila. So this is a way of getting people involved, as if they are, you know, with Kiddush HaKodesh, we also have some similar lochas. You know, we have the shluchim, and one lights a fire here and here and here, you know, until everybody knows about the... The hey Meshim lo heim. It's the right time. Shuv Shoel asks a second time. Heshivu, they answer the second time. Kachol, Heshivu, Shoshbon. Three times over. Is there Shkiyas Nacham or is there not? What else can we do to publicize this? Heshol Ha'im, the Magal Zeh. Which sickle should I use? One is sharper than the other, etc. Where should I store the saw of Omer that I'm cutting down? And then he asks them a pretty naive question. Can you give me the final okay? Ha'im or just tell me, go ahead and do the ketzir. And again, and again, three times over, he asks them, should I go ahead and cut? And they, each time they say yes. I always say, I don't know if you're familiar really with uh, the davening of a Dota Mizrach. If you daven with a Dota Mizrach, it's a whole different entity. It's a group effort. It's not like here with the Ashkenazim, it's all the Chazim. You know? You'll hear the Chazim and you'll hear people davening. That's it. Not so in the case of Sfaradim. In the case of Faradim, the Chazan is only there to get the people to respond. And they're always responding, you know. All of us show them, you know, they'll say, Amen, um, over, over, over and over again. They'll say, Amen, or Kedi Ratzot, or whatever. Have you ever seen a Sephardi Avdol? A Motsi Shabbos. Unbelievable. They wave to each other, they laugh at each other, they 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 speak about chai this and chai that, you know, for the life of the soldiers and the life of the... That's what Ktsir Saomer is all about. It's a Sephardic David. Let's get everybody involved. Everyone's on board. Now on Shabbos, they expand this public give and take question and answer between the Shliach Bezin and the people, possibly because of covered Shabbos, or possibly because on Shabbos it makes sense with Bakesh Me'elav that we should add another question. Ha'im Shabbos Zu. Is this the right Shabbos? Ha'im Ekta. Should I be cutting down the Omer on Shabbos? Go ahead and do it. Sholosh Pamim So we have another way, an additional way of publicizing the, the process of Ketir Song. The Asu came, here's the summary of everything that we learned today. Kedesha Tehei Ketir HaSa'omer Bepirsum Gadol. We want publicity. Why? I understand Bikurim. Bikurim requires publicity, full Mishnayas about the pageantry. Now, people on the way to the base of Mikdash, they were joined by many people.
because Bikurim is all about Hakar Satov. But the Omer is a simple carbon mincha. When I say simple, it means a carbon mincha. It's a ceremony, a ritual, a lachic ritual. It's going to be matir, all the tzira and all the chadosh. But why publicity? And the answer is, Fuke, Chutzi Milimam, Shalatzokim. Because the Stokim said, this is not the time for Ketzira Sa'om. Bachar Shabbos means on a Sunday. It's always got to be on a Sunday. We're not on a Sunday then. And we're going to ask the people, should we go ahead with the Omer? And they're going to respond, yes. And that response of yes is a statement of commitment to the Torah and specifically to the oral tradition. And it is a Lafuke is challenging the rebellious ones who rejected Nebuchadnezzar Prushim and the Torah Shaval Ped and Stoke. The Acha Shekatsu is on there. Now the Ketzira took place. And the Omer is in these kubots. Heavy Ula Azar, they bring it to the Azar. Vayu Choftin Oso Bekonim Lachim Ubekilche Kruv Lafrido Meamots. We're not even ready for winnowing, but we want to bang the kernels of barley with different utensils, as we'll soon see, in order to separate the chaff from the for the kernel itself. What utensils did they use? They used reeds. Now it had to be pliable reeds. You know, reeds grow in a wet area and they're soft until that you let them dry. We want to use wet, pliable uh, reeds because we don't want to destroy the kernel itself. And Kalche Kruv, it seems that the um, when you have a, a lettuce or a uh, a cabbage, what do you call each leaf? Oh, I, you know what? We'll call it a leaf. The leaves of a cabbage. Below Doshin also be mackles. You shouldn't be beating it down with hard, you know, sticks. Kederach shar tvuos, like we did with tvua. Every farmer will beat the living daylights out of his tvua to get out the chair. Because as we said before, we need that the uh, that the um, Omer be caramel, to be rach, soft. And if it's soft and you beat it down with a hard stick, it's going to get what we call niuch. I, I always give the example of a banana. If you take a banana and you crush it down, that's called milch. And you take something, anything that's soft, like a banana, in this case, the omer is soft, and you start beating it down with the back of a spoon or with a reed, then at the end, you, 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 you cause it to be completely smashed. And that's not what we want for the omer. Next. Menichen also which is called an above. And this is a copper utensil that's perforated. Now we have to roast or toast the kernels of the Omer. And the best way to do this is by putting a fire under a perforated utensil. And how do we know that this is so? Because in the parsha of the Omer, it says, Aviv, Alui, the H, Geresh, Carmel. I wonder if the, just to to me, if the Sephardic name, Abuha, if you go to Tzfat, you'll see the shul of the Maria Bua, who's contemporary of the uh, Shulchan Aruch of Rabbi Yosef Cairo, buried, that, that you can see his synagogue. Maybe the name Abuav comes from this sugya 
of the omen. He didn't advocate in favor of the other Chachamim that recommended that we start by removing the chaff and only then do we roast it in this Kli. He was of the opinion that if we start with Chavata, to beat down the Omer in such a way that we get rid of the chaff, we might be risking milch. You know, we might be absolutely smashing it. Even if we use a relatively soft reed, he would rather that we begin with toasting it, and that makes it hard. Like if you eat brand cereal, correct? Very often they toast the the kernels, and it's very hard. Then you could do the chovtim and remove the chaff. Then what happens? Interesting. Such meticulous care over the precious omen. They lay it down flat so that the air can revive it, so to speak. And now we're ready to make it into a flower. We will now grind it in a grinder. Apparently, we don't want to make it into a fine very refined solace. We want it still to be grusos. Grusos means still easy. The K Nemar Geresh Carmel. And we said that Carmel means Rachmal. So Rachmal implies that it still is peasy, such that you can soften it in your fingers. Menapin also, this is unbelievable. We are now going to sift it in a sieve called the Napa. How many times? Once? That should be enough. Like twice, maybe there's still some mixtures of particles, pebbles. Three times, four times, five times, 13 times. Bali Mahshava go wild over this. The whole idea of the Omer is meant to impress upon us that we have to clear out all that drainage from our system that undermines the Torah and the pure spiritual dedication to the Amod. Serve Hashem. And the number 13 is indicative of Torah. Torah is always compared to 13. The Shlosh Esrei Midosh at Torah Midrash You can only understand the Torah through 13 different methodological or hermeneutic principles. And the number 13 represents Siyata the Shmaya, the help of Hashem. Because there are 13 Midos of divine Racha. We're not going to so Till finally, out of this whole process, we end up with an Isarom, Ashar, the rest is Hegdesh, lends itself to Pijon, you can be potent and any man can eat it. Rabbi Shimon says, Ein kitzvah lenipu yalakol, soles hamenupa, kol tzarchel shere, there's no special number, the goal is important, not the way you achieve the goal, and the goal is that it should be solas minupa. If you can do it at once, twice, thrice, if it takes 50 times, you'll do it 50 times, it's got to be solas minupa. And all this is codified in the Mishnah, in the Sech the Menachos, on Daf Samach Vav. Now we have a solas. 
We wait till the following morning, the day of the 16th of Nisan, and now we do what's called Bumila, which is true for every single Mincha. Bolin isaron beluk shemen. Blila means when you add a liquid to a flour substance, in order to mix it together, we add a lug of shemen of oil mixed together with the solace of the saorim. Nosim olav kometz levona ishar hamenachos. Remember, we spoke about a mincha requiring not only shemen but also levona certain kind of spice, we'll call frankincense, and we put that also in the mixture. Osimbo, Tnufa, Hagosha, Kmitza, and Hakatar. We're now ready for all the other parts of the process, segments of the process that culminates in Hakatar, al Gabi Mizbeh. This is Tnufa, and we take the omen, we shake it in all directions, Again, invoking divine assistance in clearing out all those clogs in the pipelines of spirituality and devotion to God. Then we go on to Agosha, we bring it towards the Mizbeah. Finally, we're ready for the Kmitza. And after we do the Kmitza, we're ready for the Torah. Which part of the Omer of the Mincha is going to be burnt on the Mizbeah? It's Komtza. It's that Kmitza part. The balance, the Shirayim is Nechol Mukonim, like all Shirayim of all Menachos, in that sense of Minchas Omer, is identical with all Menachos, classic. There's Kmitza for Haktor al Gabi Mizbeach and the Shirayim on Nechol Muzikre Kohum. Zman Kmitzoso, Hung Achar Hakrovas Musfe Hayom. At what time on the day of the 16th of Nisan do we do the Akhtara of the Omer? And the answer is that there are certain carbonos that take precedence and come before the Omer. As Chachim as the Omer is, we have our daily carbon tumultual shot. And in on Cholomoy, we have a Musaf. Now, again, it's true that the Musaf on Pesach is a little bit less dramatic than that of Sukkot. But on Sukkot, we have the whole descending order of how many Aram we bring in the Musaf. And in Pesach, it's one and the same day after day for all seven days. But nevertheless, Musaf comes first. So Musaf is going to take place approximately around 11 or 12 noon on the 16th. It's the Musaf of Cholomoy Pesach. After the Musaf, we're ready for the Mincha Saom. Or are we ready for the Mincha Saom? What about... The Keves Ola, don't we know that the Mincha Saomer is an accompaniment to a carbon, which is called the carbon Ola, brought from a Keves, from a lamb? Wouldn't it make sense that even after we brought the Musa of Cholomoy Pesach, we need to bring the Keves as a carbon Ola so that now the Mincha Saomer can be the accompaniment of the Kevets. And yet, we're going to bring the Karban Minchas HaOm before that Kravas HaKevets to indicate that that Kravas HaKevets is secondary to the Minchas HaOm. We always consider Minachos as a tag along to a Zema. And certainly the Zeva comes first and then the Mincha second, but not so in the case of the Omer. Zman, Mitzah, we begin the Avodah, is Li Achar Musaf Hayom. First Musaf gets primary, prime time. But Lifnei Akrobas Keres Interesting. 
what it means is, let me give you a, 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 a way out analogy. I mean, please don't make this comparison, but the shita of Beis Hillel, as opposed to Beis Hillel, is that when we recite Kiddush, first we recite Borei Priya Gofen, and then we recite the bracha of Kiddush that ends with Makadesh and Shabbos, Makadesh and Shabbat Zman. Beis Shammai switches the order. Why does Beis Hillel insist that we begin with Borei Priya Gofen? And the Gemara explains at the end of the Sech of Psochim, because Machmas Hayayin, Boa Kiddush. It's only because I have Yayin that I recite this Kiddush. Kiddush without wine, we've already recited in Tefillah, in Arvis, in the Beis HaKnesset. We come home, we have Yayin, and on the Yayin, we're going to recite a second Kiddush. You don't have Yayin, there's no second Kiddush. So the Kiddush is Ba Biglal Hayayin. There's they still there for make the brach on the Yayin first. Here too, the Kevis itself, as a carbonola, has no independent significance. We brought a whole bunch of carbonos today because it happens to be the second day of Pesach. The reason we bring the Kevis is because it's, an, it's, it's part of the Omer. But if not for the Omer, we wouldn't be bringing this Kevis. So the Omer is what we call. Hakevis Bobig Lala. It comes because of the Omer, and therefore the Minchas Omer comes first and then the Kevis. Well, wait a minute. You just told me that the carbon Tami comes before the Minchas Omer. Well, we have two Tami. We have the Tami Shal Shatar and the Tami Shal Bainar Bain. Why does the Omer predate? The carbon tomb shall be in our mind. And the answer, I believe, is possible. We have the morning of Odos and the evening of Odos. The carbon tomb shall be in our mind belongs to the evening of Odos. We are not yet ready for the evening of Odos. So Minchas Omer is a carbon of the morning of the 16th. Immediately, we have to delay it until after the Tomit Shal Shacha and the Musaf. That's because these are Karbonos that are generated by the day itself and the Kedusha Sayyid. But nevertheless, the Omer is going to come before the Tomit Shal Okay, then, so this, let's make a note of where we got up to. We are on tomorrow, Mr. Shem, we are. Fast forwarding from Pesach to Shavuos, and we're going to deal with the special, unique carbon of Chag Shavuos, which is called the Shtei, the Shtei Aleph.